Going to be a fun round. Okay. I mean, we just had an unintentional draw in our future match area. We're ready to head down there now. All right. Yeah. Let's go down to the future match area now. We'll set the stage for that area of the table once we get down there. But for now, last round of Swiss from Cincinnati. Hello and welcome to coverage of Grand Prix Cincinnati. Marshall Sutcliffe in the booth with Jacob Van Lunen. We're in the last round of Swiss here, Jake, and uh, this is it. Two players sitting at 12-2. and two. Brad Nelson, the standard master of late, playing against J.D. Klumparens. And uh, Brad's playing Esper. Yeah. Jadine's on Mono Black. Correct. And she's got an updated list that's still based on the pack rat variations that we have saw for a very long stretch in standard, but she's also um, got lifebane zombies in the main. Yeah, she has four lifebane zombie and four pack rat in right. her main deck mm -hmm. here. And, uh, you know, she got a lot of removal spells to be able to afford that, but I, f I feel like that's kind of you know, pretty good because mm -hmm. there's going to be a ton of control here this week, and that's what a lot of people expected. And, I mean, it showed up in force. And we've watched so many of these mono black players just give up their game one chances by drawing a ton of spot removal spells when they're playing against these big control decks. So here she's playing against control again. And, uh, again, she, is, she only has those six spot removal spells in her deck. It should be pretty good for her. All right. So Brad has revealed his hand. It looks like it's Elspeth Dissolve Land. Land. Can't quite see those middle two cards. Uh, th there's a thought sees there for sure, and okay. I believe the other one is there a revoke existence. Okay. Brad has main deck revokes. Oh, I believe it's a last breath. It's probably her last, last breath. breath. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, the gonna... old last breath art. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Yep. So she's going to take away the thought sees here, though. So she's going to win the early thought sees fight. I would assume that this is not a matchup that she's super excited to play since she is on the Pack Rat plan and Brad Nelson has a bit like eight main deck answers to Pack Rat. Is that That's true fair. or is it is it still a fine matchup for her? I mean I still think it's it's pretty even. I mean her her only removal spells that don't kill planeswalkers are Bioblights. Okay. That's it. Like she has Heroes Downfalls, which are still live. Uh Bioblight will require uh a card from Brad. I mean, she's paying two mana for it. She doesn't have to sink any more mana into it. She can just, you know, continue curving out connections and things pack like rat. that. Yeah, Pack okay. Rat. You said Bio Blight, and I was like, Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. But I'm so, yeah, Pack Rat is a card that she doesn't have to invest any more in. She can just, you know, peck away with it. And Brad's probably going to use a card to deal with it in there. You see yeah, that? He did. Now, she knew that was going to happen. That was in his hand when she thought sees. So she, she has a backup plan here in mind. And yeah, I mean, if she has a Night Vale Spectre, that that's now. great for her. It turns out it's another Pack Rat in this case. She doesn't hit her third land drop, but she does have a Pack Rat there that is going to threaten Brad's life total once she hits that next land. Which Thank is you. right now. All right, in goes Pack Rat. She says, sure, take one. Your move. Yeah, and I like that play from her a lot. I mean, there are so many things Brad could have there when he's, you know, he just has access to four or five mana now. So, you know, just attacking for one is better because you're not opening yourself up to get blown out by a Detention Sphere or a Supreme Verge or something of the like. Right. And uh, Brad plays his land and then just passes the turn back. She's going to activate her pack rat here. She's going to get rid of a Lifebane zombie. Trade that in for a rat. And this seems very reasonable. For four here. So this is pretty good for Jadeen. Brad's just going to take it, drop down to 15. And I believe Brad does have the Detention Sphere in hand, so he's, he's going to get some good value off this Detention Sphere in his next turn. Uh, next, he's uh, being patient with turn. it, exchanging some of his life total here for some and cards out of Jadeen's hand. hand. Uh, yeah. And there it is. Brad decides that he can't wait any longer. He's going to the tension sphere both of the rats away. Jadine did hit her fourth land drop. Brad just passes the turn back. Yeah, Jadine but the thing has is, no is play for that entire turn. Yeah, and not only does she... Well, I'm sure she has a play this turn, but the issue is, is that Brad has Dissolve in hand, mm. and she knows about it. That's and right. then not only does he have that Dissolve that she knows about, but he's also about to just drop an Elspeth onto the table once she passes the turn back. So he's about to Dissolve what she 
plays uh -huh. and then play an Elspeth into an empty board. That does not sound great for from Jadine's side of the board. Now, she does have reasonable ways to get back from that scenario, though. You mentioned she has Heroes Downfalls and stuff, so she can minimize the effect. But let's see what her plan is for right now. Hey, another pack rat. So are you predicting a dissolve right here? Um, I you have to think predict he just it lets before it he does anything. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have time. I, when yeah. I put you on the spot, <laughs> I'm hitting the button. I want the JVL answer right away. It's not fair. When I'm playing the game, I have a chance to think about it. I know. It. <laughs> this, is, this is a much different game you've entered here, JVL. You're in the booth <laughs> with me now, buddy. <laughs> now, I believe that Brad's actually uh, still thinking here. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely worth thinking about because if your opponent does, or if she does end up having something like Hero's Downfall, then, you know, you just end up not being in as good of a spot as you would have liked. Right. But and there it is. She does have four copies of Hero's Downfall on her main deck. I think she has one in hand from uh, her okay. hand reaction uh, to the Elspeth. She, like, pulled the one card to the front as if to, that she was going to use it and then realized she didn't have the three lands. So maybe... Maybe she doesn't have it, and you can see she had written down what she knew of Brad's hand from that early thought sees. And that's updating definitely that wise list. to do that. Oh, I see. She's also got an underworld connections in her hand here. Ooh, just well, a demon. Well, she's going to play a demon, so she must not have the hero's yeah. downfall because demon versus Elspeth doesn't work well for the demon player. All right, so Brad actually just attacked with all three soldiers, fired off Supreme Verdict post-combat, and then made three more soldiers there. Yeah, now he has dissolve mana, and... He has an active Elspeth already on the table. That's going to get immediately dissolved. But she's got a follow-up play, and it's another one. All right, so Underworld Connections yeah. does stick ultimately for Jadine, which is a good thing. The downside for her, though, of course, is that Elspeth is already now going to go up to seven and is threatening not only ultimate but just making a bunch of tokens. And now Brad Main phases out. A Sphinx's Revelation for four, so he can hit his land drop for the turn, which he does. And it feels like Brad Nelson's really Pretty far ahead. Here. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's, he's looking real good here to pick up this first game. Now, it's not over yet, though. Jadine does have an active Underworld connection, so she's going to get to see quite a few cards before Brad actually finishes her off. Right, 369, 8, no, maybe not. All right, I, we didn't get to see it, but we know what it was. It was yeah. Hero's Downfall. Here's Downfall deals with that Elspeth. And then a Bile Blight deals with okay, all this. Okay, now, now, so now we're talking business. Now, remember, Brad Nelson did just Sphinx's Revelation, so he has a pretty nice grip of cards. But J. Dean also has that Underworld Connections going that we just talked about. And uh, she may have put herself right back in this game here. Two specific answers to two much different types of threats of Planeswalkers and, like, six tokens. Oh, no. She plays the land and passes, but Brad Nelson has another Sphinx's Revelation, which, of course, is kind of what starts happening when you fire off the first one for four. Now he's getting one for six. <laughs> All those cards. It's just uh, so a tough wealth. to deal with. And Detention Sphere is going to take down Underworld Connections, and you got to feel like the Pendulum has swung firmly back in Brad Nelson's direction here. Yeah, I mean, all those cards in his hand. Uh, she, you know, was drawing two cards a turn for two or three turns, but it just seems like that wasn't enough. I mean, Brad's hand has multiple copies of Dissolve. Right. And eventually he's just going to draw an Aetherling or an Elspeth, yeah. and that's going to be And Jadine's it. seen enough. Yeah. She's going to pack him in, and Brad Nelson takes down the first game. Take a look at our other match here. I, I think that's Ari Lax behind the judge there, right? Yes, it is. And who's his opponent? Uh, who, we'll we'll find that for you. Yeah, I not, can't. I don't recognize sure him. No, I, I see who he is. I just don't know who he is. <laughs> Rusty's pointing to the screen. He's that guy. <laughs> 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 um, 
They're sideboarding back there too. Uh, we'll find out who won, who that, won first that first game. game. Yeah, I know. I'm curious. Uh, Randy's over there. I see him, you know, scouring through the top tables, getting information for us. He'll be bringing us live updates on those matches of all the people who are basically playing winning ins to get in here. We had a pretty Austin won game one. Okay. So Ari down a game, and Ari lacks playing. Black Green Dredge, if he wants to make it into the top eight here, he needs to rattle off two games in a row. Yep. Two Austin more games. Is going to be the thing standing in between him and a top eight. And of course, Austin's playing for his own top eight here as well. So he is going to make it as difficult as humanly possible for Ari Lax to do that. This is it. This is what it comes down to. This is the match mm -hmm. playing for top eight in the Grand Prix. So let's see, we'll uh, will Brad Nelson's incredible run at Standard Grand Prix events continue? Or will it come to an end? I want to see what his win percentage is for those for standard over the last, you know, however long. Yeah, he uh Apparently, all these people are getting very angry, becoming green. I think they just. I think <laughs> isn't green sick? Oh, I guess so. I was thinking yeah, like Hulk. They don't. Oh gosh, gotcha. yeah. <laughs> I missed that. <laughs> I like that. All right, looks like they're they've calmed down a bit. No, <laughs> no, they're they're hulking out. <laughs> this is getting weird. But <laughs> we'll make sure that some uh, type of radioactive activity. <laughs> we'll get Rashad over there to to fix it. Oh, this camera angle looks nice. Yeah. You know, I did the oh, well. color balancing well done. for this one. Thank you. I appreciate well that, JVL. Mm -hmm. So, Jadine, down a game and facing Brad Nelson. Pretty tough spot to be in playing for, for uh, GP Top 8 here in Cincinnati. Yeah, but, I mean, she's, uh, she's killed it. She's played really well in the two matches we watched her. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And how does this matchup change? Like, does she have what, – what, what is she bringing in from her sideboard here, Jake? Okay, so uh, post board in the control matchup, she gets extra copies of duress. Uh, How many? I remember she had three. one in the main. She has, so she gets to fill out her play set of duress. So in she the control has. Matchup. So, so will she have four duress, four thoughtsies then? Yes, she'll Jeez. have four four post board. She also gets, gets to bring an Erebos okay. out of the dead. Uh, she gets an extra whip of Erebos. So she'll then have two Erebos and two whip of Erebos. Okay. It's pretty nice. Uh, she also has the option of pains here, but I don't really see that being okay. something that's going to happen here. And how quickly can she get those Bile Blights out of her deck? Are those the worst card in the matchup for her? Yes. Okay, yes, so those definitely. are just out. Those are out. Those are out immediately. And then uh, from there it gets a little more complicated. She only has two more cuts to do if she wants to bring in the Whip, three Duresses, and two Ereboses here. Yeah, I mean, she may also want the Pain Seers, though. So it ah. may just be, it may be maybe Demons and... Those, but the, the demons are demons fine. Demons are so interesting because they're either they're kind awful of bad here. or they're just like, wow, that thing still has six power and it's going to kill me very quickly and I must deal with it. Yeah, but the major issue here is that, I mean, Brad, you know, his his deck, despite being this like hard control deck, he also has, uh, you know, Muta Vaults and multiple right. copies of Elspeth 3 that he can just sacrifice tokens to that thing until he finds an answer for it. That's so. Right. All right, so we're underway here. Brad Nelson kicks things off with Temple of Deceit, Jadeen. On her side, started with a Swamp and has now played a Muta Vault. And there's the first of potentially eight hand disruption cards that Jadine's going to be packing here. It's a Duress, and she can hit, looks like a Thoughtseize, a Sphinx's Revelation, a Dissolve. And down on the bottom there, what are you seeing, Jake? I see uh, a Temple and a Godless Shrine. Okay, and a so those are all sphere. four lands. So No one's a Detention Sphere. Oh, there's a Detention Sphere yeah, down there. three lands okay. and a D-Sphere. Okay. I think. I'm leaning on you here, buddy. Could be a revoke existence down there, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't know if he's... Does he have those? Yeah, he, he does, in fact, have those. But I think it's a gold card. Looks like Jadine's deep in the tank. You see hand on head there. She's... 
<coughs> really doesn't want to mess up this duress. I mean, th these ones are really difficult because you have to think so many cards into the future. I mean, sometimes it's obvious, right? You just take the best card. That's what she ended up doing here. Is yeah, just I, the best I, I would have taken the revelation uh -huh. also. I mean, but it, it depends so much on what she has on her hand about what she's going to be picking here. And we haven't really gotten a good look at her hand, but we're going to get one now. Heroes Downfall, Underworld Connections, Grey Merchant, and a Whip. So he's almost certainly peeling this uh, Underworld Connections out of her hand. That is the number one culprit from his side of the table. Yeah, I mean, what's interesting, though, is that, I mean, Whip is pretty good against the control deck. I mean, they have Detention Sphere to deal with it, but if they don't Detention Sphere it, it it can cause a real problem as the game progresses. Yeah, you can kind of overload their detention spheres at some point, right? I mean, whips and yes. Erebuses and underworld connections. Like they, they have not. They only got four of them. All right, so Muta Vault gets in there for two, and Jadine just has to pass the turn back. <coughs> Brad's going to play a hollowed fountain and just pass turn back. He's played it tapped as well, so he's not even bothering to mess around with the whole dissolve situation. And she's going to battle again. You like that? I do like that. I mean, yeah. she doesn't like, she just has a land that comes into play tapped. She's not really going to be, uh, you know, casting anything this turn. Yep. Next turn, she can go for a whip. I think you should just keep running that Muta Vault into there. It's, if you can get the free damage, you should take it. All right. This is interesting here. Brad Nelson, pretty aggressive with his Jace, <laughs> minusing it into a Muta Vault, and this is tapping him out. So he knows he's going to be. Losing his Jace next turn to just tapping two mana for, for Jadine. What does that signal to you, Jake? Well, I think he, he knows land? what's in her hand. He mm -hmm. knows that she has Whip Grey Merchant. So he's assuming that she's just going to untap and cast Whip or Grey Merchant. And okay. then, you know, him casting Jace, like, he's going to be ahead there. Yeah. So that's like, basically, he's just making his plays based on what he's seen thus far. Okay. I mean, uh, the casting I, the Jace is It's very easy. interesting that it's he went the, for the Dissolve minus or, Oh, he took the Dissolve? Okay. So he took the Dissolve over Dark Betrayal and Supreme Verdict. Wow. Yeah, and, like, those are two very high-impact cards. Uh, Dark Betrayal, obviously, you know, you can kill whatever you want, and it's just yeah, pretty impressive. Instant speed, one mana, kill anything? Except for Muta Vault? Except for Muta Vault, which seems to be the thing that needs to be killed at this point. But, you so, know, what kills Muta Vault is Muta Vault. It's true. So, Jadine... Takes down Jace with her Muta Vault, but doesn't have a play this turn as a result. This is what you were talking about where Brad's like, well, I'm ahead anyway because now she can't play the whip, right? Yeah. She can't, you know, she yeah, can't Yeah, if she's going to apply pressure to that Jace with her Muta Vault, then she, you know, uses that turn to not play a whip. She uses that turn to not play Grey Merchant. But now Brad has all his mana open. She knows that he has at least a Dissolve in hand. She's just not going to play into it, and right. I like that a lot. Yep. You know, when you're playing against these control decks and you know that they have it, why are you just playing into it? You see people do this all the time. Well, what's, you know, what's, if you're, what's if you're her ahead, other? Okay, she's, she's ahead, ahead because of the Muta Vault. She's attacking with that Muta Vault. Gotcha. That Muta Vault will but kill But don't him. you feel like she's falling behind with every land drop that that Brad hits? Like, tick-tock to a big revelation here? This is this cannot be a game plan where she, her plan is, I'm just going to hit you six times with Muta Vault and do nothing because I know you have a Dissolve, right? I mean, you can just keep on attacking. I don't think that it's... Mm -hmm. Like, he's got to tap mana at some point, and then you can start playing your cards. And there's a really good one, Pack Rat. All right. And the reason it's 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 not a good card necessarily in this spot, but it's something that it's something that Brad's probably going to have to counter. He does. And it's something you don't really care if it gets countered. Yeah, I like that. So Brad Nelson at 10 life here. Doing a whole, whole lot of scrying throughout the course of this match. Dissolve scry, land scry, everything scries. Yeah, really setting himself up nicely here. All these scry, uh, scry effects. Another Muta Vault attack. Muta Vault battles again drops Brad Nelson down to eight. You know, one of, one of the plans that I was thinking of when I asked you that question, Jake, was maybe getting into Grey Merchant range, right? Like yeah. pecking away at his life total. And trying to set up a big Grey Merchant hit where he let the whip resolve. Oh, I wonder if he has Revoke or maybe Detention Sphere. Is there anything worth whipping back right now? Pack Rat? He's, does she have enough mana to do the, the whip, make a rat plan? Not quite. 
Uh, she's one short of Whip Maker Rat, but right. I don't even know if you'd really even want to do that against Brad's deck. Oh, okay. I think you're uh, more looking to uh, whip things like Grey Merchant. Oh, Randy has an update for us. We got one through. Clyde Martin with the black aggro deck. 2-0 over Nick Seifert. He's sitting on 39 points, barring a tiebreaker catastrophe. He should be through to the top eight. The other update, I watched a really interesting match between Deshaun Baylock Bay and uh, Kyle Bogomis. Deshaun has that uh, Esper control that's creature heavy, but no permission. No, no permission. He's yeah. stuck in Obsidot and never attacked because of fear of Azorius Charm. He was right. Kyle was sitting on Azorius Charm. He just out, in, out, in, out, in. Oh, Sphinx's Revelation. Out, in, out, in. Oh, another Sphinx's Revelation. Kyle top decks the third Sphinx's Revelation. The turn before he's going to die manages to attack for lethal with an Aetherling while with one life left. Wow. So Kyle wins a match where Obsidot flipped. I'm, it must have been at least 15 times. Unbelievable. Crazy wow. game. Crazy, crazy game. But yeah, Kyle's up a game now. All right, so Jadeen is going for Underworld Connections here. Unfortunately, it's going to get dissolved by Brad Nelson. Yeah, Brad down to just a detention sphere in hand. Jadeen still with a whip in play, a mutaval in play. Uh, Yeah, Brad's just going to go ahead and tension sphere that whip, and it looks like he's just completely out. Completely out of gas here. Brad falling down to six now from this Muta Vault. And when you asked me what's going to happen, is she just going to attack with this Muta Vault a whole bunch of times? Is Brad uh -huh. going to die? That, that's about to happen. Okay. Yeah, so. But you didn't say yes when I asked you, so you don't get credit for it. I'm sorry, Jake. Maybe <laughs> next time, buddy. So here's JD battling and bringing Brad Nelson down to two. Does he find a Sphinx's revelation? No, it looks like he's found an Elspeth here. Ooh. That was timely. He needed something big off the top there, and he yeah, found it. Yeah, but she has Grey Merchant. <clears throat> does she have it in her hand? I believe she does, right? That It's lethal on its yeah. own. All right, started off with Grey Merchant and... Ooh, Dark Betrayal does Dark Betrayal does with the it. Merchant trigger on the stack, but she's got enough to activate Muta Vaults here. She's going to activate both and attack with both, kill one of them, chump lock the other, and have one draw step for Brad Nelson, and he doesn't find it. Yeah, the Jay Muta Vault attacks were good enough. That was awesome. So, J.D. That was awesome. You know, we got to remember, too, you know, my thinking on it is, okay, so Brad's going to be... Uh, scrying and doing a bunch to try to find the Sphinx's Revelation, which is going to just erase all of that uh, Mutavault damage, right? Mm -hmm. But remember, turn one, Jadeen took away a Sphinx's Revelation with, you know, a, a dress or whatever it was. Yeah, and, the, and that left him with only three left. And, you know, even taking one out of the equation is a big deal. Yeah, Brad also had uh, had another Sphinx's Revelation in his hand that he didn't cast later because he, I guess, was planning on just doing it when he needed to and making it huge. And Jadeen waited until he tapped it down so far for that Elspeth, then downfalled the Elspeth, then thought seized away the other Revelation. Wow, so Jadeen played that game in in a fashion that I think I think probably 90% of the players in this room mm -hmm. playing mono black would have lost that game in her Okay. Seat. So awesome stuff there from Jadeen. Brad Nelson... Super close. Uh, Arielax. Okay, yeah, so uh, I'm being told here by Rusty that uh, looks like Arielax has won his game, but that means that he gets to force a game three. So Ooh. not out of the woods yet. So one game to top eight for uh Yeah, that makes Arielax. me nervous just yeah. thinking about it. It always makes me nervous. Jeez. Dude, it's crazy when you're playing those games. Mm-hmm. Just like the, the adrenaline? Yeah. Oh, my God. You like feel like you're going to explode. All right, so J.D. and Klumparins against Brad Nelson playing four top eight here. Brad gets to be on the play in this game. Uh, leads off with a Temple of Silence. Th this is the other oh, game. Oh, this is the other, okay. Yeah, yeah. 
It's like, where the hell that forest getting her deck? <laughs> <laughs> she sideboards in a bunch of forests, yeah. So again, uh, on this other side, this is Austin, and he's playing against Ari Lax. Uh, I'm not really sure what deck Austin's on. It looks like he's some variant of Black Devotion, yeah. but Ari is playing a really, really, ooh, Oh, that's I think he cool. must be black-white mid-range there, huh? Yeah. Reading some bones. Commune with the gods here. Commune with the gods, yep. Yeah. So revealing a bunch of cards here. He's going to get a creature or an enchantment. And, uh, huh. What do you think he's going to take here? I think he's probably just going to take Seder Wayfinder. I can't see Maybe the rest he'll of just take hand. Deathrite Shaman because then he can just cast it this turn. I don't know if he has another land. Yeah, I don't but know. But taking Deathrite seems pretty good if he, if he doesn't have another land. <laughs> I wonder how many times Ari's had to do that. Yeah. <laughs> He's playing a couple of cards that don't see a lot of play in standard. Commune with the Gods, Seder Wayfinder. Even Herald of Torment and stuff, you know, aren't exactly staples. Night Howler. Ah, uh, so he does have the extra land. Okay. Gonna take that swamp, and wow, this is his graveyard is getting pretty stacked. It now. kind of is. There wasn't that many creatures though in that Seder Wayfinder reveal. There was there. There was mostly lands. That was mostly lands, but the reveal before the commune was three guy, er, uh, four guys in a land. Okay. So now you're talking. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's see. Right, so it looks like uh, it looks like Ari has access to Nemesis Immortals and a number of other uh, number of other impressive threats here. I don't know if that's Jared. It really looks like he just has uh, the world is his oyster at this point. We've seen Ari Lax's deck come up with huge chunks of damage in short order repeatedly over the course of the weekend here in Cincinnati. He was telling me some stories uh, from earlier in the tournament and yeah, I mean, he you know, took a guy from 18 to nothing. You know, that kind of thing where people just aren't ready for it. Uh, I was watching Ari play and he had put a Night Howler on his Lotleth troll and he attacked Elspeth and the guy's like, yeah, I'll chump with one of my tokens. And he's like, yeah, Elspeth's dead. The guy's trample. like, that has trample? Sure That's does. quite good. All right, Blood Baron of Viscopa here for Austin. Can present big problems, but doesn't have to. I mean, yeah, I mean, the thing Ari is, is has a lot of ways to interact with a card like that. A lot of yeah. his big threats are just green. Yeah, I mean, he, I think he has three Nemesis Immortals now. So, yeah. like... Blood Baron doesn't match up very well against 5-5 five, five green guys. I felt like Blood Baron ha should have had a bad matchup somewhere. I <laughs> just haven't seen it yet since it's been printed, but Ari found it. I mean, even this kind of a situation is like that, too. I mean, look at this. Yeah. Ari put a Night Howler on that thing and just attacked. <laughs> I mean, yeah, how many attack. times do you see people just attack into Blood Barons? And look at that. Post-combat, make a 5-5 five, five for two mana. Yep. <laughs> This deck is sweet. This deck is really sweet. And we're probably going to see some sort of spot removal spell here. All right, looks like we're going to head back over to our main feature match, which apparently is underway here. Whoa, yeah. Whoa, okay. all right. So we've got Ratchet Bomb with a counter on it. There's a whole lot going on yeah, here. Yeah, there's a Jace Architect of Thought here that uh, has two loyalty. Uh, Pack Rat has been uh, it's in, in the, the sphere detention there. sphere, uh -huh. yeah. And it looks like the early play was J. Dean thought seizing Brad, taking away a Dark Betrayal with that, trying to clear the way for Pack Rat, but it looks like. Uh, yeah, so here she split up the Aetherling with a land and then the Revoke existence. And yes, the Revoke does deal with both the uh, Ratchet Bomb or the Erebos, but I mean, it's, it's the Aetherling and it's a land. 
I mean, can you possibly turn up the Aether Lane with the land? It's interesting. I mean, if Jadine can make Erebos into a creature, then she can apply really quick, big pressure and certainly make that worth it. If her plan is to sit back on Erebos and wow, kind of grind away. Wow, great split there for, her, for, mm -hmm. for Jadine. I mean. And there's a thought seize for Brad Nelson, revealing Whip Whip Gray Merchant. Ah, so that's, that's not very exciting. Thought seize? That is not a very exciting thought seize, is it? No, I mean, because if, if you take a whip, merchant. she just has a whip. If you take a Gray Merchant, she, she has two whips to get back to the Gray Merchant. Right. So. I mean, he's likely just going to take uh, the Gray Merchant and then... That does strand a whip in her hand, at least. And it forces her to, like, tap ball for mana basically forever. But, I mean, she has a lot of time in this matchup, so... Uh, so Brad revokes Erebos. And she's going to tick up that Ratchet Bomb and slowly, slowly ticking towards the uh, Detention Sphere range here. And there's a whip. Pass the turn back. So Whip, if this game goes really long, can be a pretty big factor. Not likely to be a huge one with Brad Nelson sitting at 18 life, though. And Nate and Jadine having no creatures on board currently, and I think only one in the yard. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, Brad could have thought seized before he uh, minus two the Jace the turn mm -hmm. before, mm -hmm. and then the, uh, the Aetherling that he had there, he could have just kept that instead of taking the revoke existence because knowing her hand, you know that she's not really going to get to activate that Erebos anytime in the near future as long as you, uh, you know, because she's going to be tapping out every single turn. Right. All right, so Grey Merchant coming back, draining for four here. Yes. Not bad. No, Good no, start no. for sure. Also going to take down Jace. That's nice. Yeah, now she can just also keep this Ratchet Bomb in play and kind of use it as a, uh, you know. A threat. A well, it's it's in it's in a way like a meddling mage naming detention. It's sphere. a sealed of de sealed detention spheres. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> that is interesting. I mean, because Brad can't play another sphere now. No. Into that ratchet bomb, and she can just sit there and keep it at three now. And then once she has enough lands in play and enough cards in hand that she can just assassinate him with a pack rat out of nowhere if he taps out, then she can actually go for it. Meanwhile, Brad Nelson fires off a huge Sphinx's Revelation and follows it up with Elspeth, Sun's Champion. Bioblight's going to clear out the tokens. And she's going to use her Ratchet Bomb to get back her Pack Rat here. Make a Pack Rat token, discarding the other redundant whip. Yep. So not bad. Yeah, and then she gets to make another Pack Rat, and she gets to actually kill this Elspeth. I mean, that, that was all end step, yeah. Yeah, great. So this is... Now, Brad Nelson does have one black mana ominously looming down there. Yeah, if he has Dark Betrayal, then... Although I, I think that she was actually tapped out for a, for a bit there, so... All right, so Elspeth down. Jadine fighting hard. That dice that's sitting in the middle of the, of the mat is nothing. Those were so let's see. the floating have, loyalty. Uh, He has a Jace, which he pluses, and then he gets rid of both of the pack rats. Or all of the pack rats with another detention sphere. Yeah. Unfortunately, and though, the real issue here is that Jadine's top decking. Yeah, and now Brad has the Dissolve in hand, too. And he's just going to ultimate this Jace, it looks like. He has enough counter magic in hand to apply enough pressure. There's a Pain Seer for Jadine. Could be interesting. And there's another Sphinx's Revelation for Brad Nelson. Yeah, and that's, that's going to be pretty tough for Jadine to deal with. Right. I mean, he, how many cards did he draw over the last three turns? Jeez, like 14 or something. Look at his hand. Completely yeah, it's a insane. a really impressive hand at this point. And Jadine is currently stu stuck top decking. He's going to revoke existence the whip. 
just because he can. Pass a turn back to Jadine. She might get to attack here. And this is the bad part of the game if you're sitting in Jadine's seat. And I yep. think she's going to pack him in, and it's hard to blame her there. Once the player starts actively using those Azorius charms to just blank your draw steps, yeah, and I mean, uh, you're done. Brad was actually ultimating next turn. With and he the was. Jace, yeah. He was ultimating Jace. Yeah. Okay. So, so that's, that's going to do it there. Jadine loses to Brad Nelson, so Brad looks like he's good to go. Back over here, though, on our secondary feature match, we have Ari Lax versus Austin. And Austin has Obsidot and Blood Baron going right now? It looks like it. Wow. I want to know what the life totals are. We're going to get those updated for you as soon as we can. Obviously super important here. Arielax looks through his huge graveyard. So Austin's sitting at 20 life and Ari's at 7. That being said, Jared may be absolutely ginormous. We don't know. That's right. <laughs> Tax from Blood Baron of Escopa. Maybe enough here for uh, Austin. He's going through the motions. All right, so Austin's going to pass the turn back, blinking out. His guy, remember the one damage, Ari. That's what uh, Austin said. Lose a life there. Can Ari get in for 20 here? Is there any way he can get in for enough? I mean, right now, Austin has the win, well, effectively on the board, right? Yep. Obsidot's going to take Ari Lax down to four, and then one attack from Blood Baron. And that's going to be it. Yeah, the troll can't block it. Yeah, there's nothing in Ari's deck list that actually stops that. And yep. that's going to do it. Austin Tramper's going to advance here. Ari Lax and his dredge deck, the dream dies there. Pretty cool deck Great that Austin run, has, though, yeah. though, too. Yes, agreed. I mean, Ari's deck I'm is curious obviously to see like that. kind of insane, but. Yeah, I'm curious to see it. And uh, I know Conley was rooting for that too. It was his deck. Oh, yeah. Randy. More news from Randy. Talk